So do you struggle with ACC setups? Do you look at the setup pages and have no idea what to do? And does that put you off playing ACC, whether it's on console or PC? I feel your pain. I've been there. I'm kind of still there. <laughs> but luckily, we've got an ACC wizard on the call. He won't want me to call him a wizard, but he's someone who does know about setups and he understands the fundamentals. And we're going to explore in this video kind of what the different bits do in ACC with the setups. It is Nathan Maximin. He's a Kirith Esports driver in iRacing. He's very fast in ACC on PC. He's also playing ACC on PS5 and Gran Turismo 7. And we've raced together in karting. So in this video, we're going to go through the setup page in ACC and we're going to tell you what the things kind of do. This isn't going to be an automatic guide and show you some finished setups, but hopefully it's going to show you the principles. And like always, if you've got any comments on this, if you've got any setup tips, let us know in the comments. This really is the ACC console community right now. So if you're there, Nathan, Nathan's watching this screen. Yep. Should we get into it? Where should we go? Should we go aggressive or safe, do you think? Um, well, I think the main differences between safe and aggressive is the oversteer levels that you get from the car. So typically an aggressive setup, if you open the aggressive, yep. go to aero. So first thing you'll notice is that the front is very, very low, front right height. As low as possible, right? Yeah, yeah. And the rear right height is a little bit higher. Yeah. Um, now what that will give you is a frontwards uh what do they call it frontwards weight distribution because and the that front mean, is lower right so it's yeah 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 so uh, the most important thing with these gt3 cars is how you pitch the car into the corner so that will determine how much grip you've got on each tire it will determine where the weight is on the car and that will determine how much speed you can carry through a corner okay how much confidence you can have in the car in the corner so ride height automatically is just is one of the most important things you can alter when it comes to setups okay um so we're at where are we catalonia yeah catalonia so, so like, a lot of yeah, it's, it's a, corners yeah yeah medium speed corners but you need a lot of downforce to be fast at this track i think officially the fastest car at this track is the 720s okay just because of the amount of downforce it produces um but yeah and mid mid engine cars are just the whole another end of the spectrum with how you drive them i think fr cars if you're starting out in acc jumping an fr car straight away front engine is very more easy stable. to drive easy to control yeah much more stable um because the the weight transfers and uh uh the the aero setups are much easier to drive in front engine cars in mid engine cars like the audi the lamborghini similar to gran turismo to be honest they are very hard to control is, is, is that nathan is that because in an fr car you've got obviously quite a bit of weight at the front so you are yeah. applying some weight over the front wheels, which is kind of giving you that equilibrium. Whereas in an MR car, you can have moments where you've got way too much kind of weight transfer on the rear wheels and suddenly yeah, you're yeah. oversteering. You kind of visualize yeah. it. Yeah, I think uh, the Lamborghini has something like a 58-42 okay. towards the rear, like weight distribution. Yeah. Um, I think the Audi is the same as well. Um, but in a car, I think BMW are always 50-50, to be honest. Or mm. well, they aim to be as close as possible. Um, so you can just imagine, like, having an even weight distribution just makes the car very predictable, very easy to drive. And that's what you get with front engine cars on the whole. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, your ride height will determine um, how much weight is on the front and rear. Should we, look, should we have a look at the safe setup? Yeah. Oh my! My you... game just crashed. So, <laughs> so you, this is like this is live, uh, live YouTube. Um, so I can tell you if you can't see, I can tell you the right out on the front is yeah, it's higher in the safe setup. So yeah, it's not okay. As... Yeah, I'm back on now. Yeah, so 52 on the front. You know, I know it's it's two mil difference. You might not think it's a lot, but trust me, I I, I can tell the difference between one mil difference 
um, when it comes to setups and, and these cars. So having that two mil will just move the overall weight balance to the back just that tiny bit more, giving you a bit okay. more confidence Slight, in the rear of the car. Slightly pitching the front up. So you can yeah. give more grip yeah. to the rear. Okay, fine. Yeah. Um, but of course, yeah, you balance that all out with the rear wing at the end of the day. You know, you. I think the idea is you go through your whole setup and then balance it all out with the rear wing. Obviously, depending on the, the track average speed, like uh, Catalonia, you haven't really got high speed corners as such. So you could get away with going quite aggressive on the right heights yeah. and not running a lot of wing or okay. not a lot of, not, not, not too much wing. Like you don't need to max out the wing. Okay. Um, because the, the corners are just not fast enough for that. A, a, a track like Silverstone, yeah. you would try to go quite high on the rear. Because that's when you need that aerodynamic you... kind of downforce. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, so having the front higher, it pretty much just uses the, uh, sorry, having the rear higher pretty much just uses the whole car as, as a wedge. And, you know, you're using the whole body of the car to produce downforce as well as the wing as well. Nice. Having by by having the rear higher. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a track like Silverstone, you would want to go quite high on the rear to make sure that the rotation's good. But then you'd also balance that out with running a lot of wing so that you're not constantly losing the rear. Okay, fine. In the faster corners. I, I didn't know how fundamental ride height was, but I, c I can now appreciate it that the whole balance of the car and kind of which tyres you're loading and how the weight transfer is going to work and whether you're going yeah, to be oversteer yeah. or understeer derives from the right height. So, yeah, that seems to be like the fundamental one. And I can appreciate yeah. that depending on how fast corners you have and therefore how much downforce you need through high-speed corners, then you can mm -hmm. tweak that with the wing. Okay. Nice. What would you say is... So the next... Yeah. Yeah, the next most important thing I would say... It's probably brake bias. Okay. Um, and then tyres very closely after, but we'll have a look at tyres afterwards. Yeah. Um, so one thing I'd like to say about brake bias is that it really alters how you approach a corner. Yeah. Some people really like braking in a, in a straight line as hard as possible, late as possible, and then just release and turn in. Others prefer to trail brake so carry the brake as late as possible into the corner um, and to be honest I think with ACC they do encourage you to be off the inputs as much as well, mid corner to be off the inputs Co coasting um, yeah yeah so just letting the tyres do the work let the chassis do the work mid corner um, I mean I'm probably still a bit of a trail breaker yeah. Um, so me personally, I would take the brake bias to the rear a little bit. So l let's talk fundamentals for anyone watching that is kind of okay. I don't know what any of these things mean. So when you let's say you're going, let's say it's turn one at Catalonia, which is a long straight, and then you've got quite a sharp right. There's mm -hmm. two ways of doing it. Either you can you can go in, you can brake in a straight line, maximum braking um, ability, and use all of the tyres grip to slow down the car in a straight line slow the car down so you can make the apex release turn in and off your way or you can try and break a little bit later and with not quite this is a very rough way of putting it not quite as much force and so you reserve some of the tires grip to allow you to turn in the braking phase and what you really do is you bleed off the brakes as you slow down and allow the tires to give more grip to the turning and that allows you to take different angles into the corner and a lot of it's about personal preference how we drive um, oh yeah, yeah. That's that's a massive thing. Personal preference is massive. Yeah. Um, you know, one person might be faster on a safe setup compared to another who's faster on aggressive. Um, but that's the thing about ACC. It's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of testing. It's a lot of getting to know your driving style, getting to know what you want out of a car. Um, but yeah, for me, brake bias is it's very very important into angling your car into a corner yeah um if you can imagine a go-kart which only has rear brakes yeah for me 
I put the brake bias to the rear because I like to, I mean, it's, it's not locking up the rear wheels, but it's reducing the rotation of the rear wheels a bit more than the front wheels, for example. Yeah. And by doing that, you induce um, a, a slight slip angle, if yeah. that makes sense. So just like you'd have a slip angle by using a throttle on the exit of a corner to push the car around the corner, you could also do the same on the brake. I think I think I understand because so, so Nathan and I's background is both in karting, and mm -hmm. in karting you you basically use the brake to steer. Um, thinking like you know Ashby and um, at Walton Mill, where you just basically like trailing it in. Um, yeah. So I can I can kind of visualise, and I'll be putting some videos up on screen here to tr hopefully translate to to anyone watching, but. When you get on the brakes in a car, you're essentially sliding, right? Sliding along the yeah. tires, getting the car turned in the right direction, and you're able to release the brake and punch it. So I can kind of see what you yeah. mean with that slip angle. You kind of getting the the rears um, slowed down a bit, so you're sliding them laterally, and you're inducing a yeah. bit of slip. So I can kind of see. Um, yeah, of course, it's it's almost like microscopic sliding. Mm. Um, it's not like you're going to be leaving big tire marks down the track yeah because of your brake bias it's just the very very small under rotation that you're trying to induce but that's what it's all and about by doing that yeah yeah by doing that you're able to get the rear out um which you know it'll give you a better angle going into the corner and so when we talk about driving styles it might be that and let in fact in the comments let us know what your driving style is are you someone that likes to brake as late as possible in a straight line or do you like to manipulate the car in the corners which can sometimes give you a better exit be very interesting um because i've always been someone that really likes to try and manipulate the car in in the braking phase it's like a sensation i, I like to do make it feels alive um mm, i think we get that from karting yeah to be honest yeah but there's also something to yeah, be said i love a lively car I love a lively car with a, a lively rear. Yeah. Um, and and I, I think karting is all about the rear. You know, you do most of your steering with the rear. Yeah. Well, not most, of it, but you know, you do well, an important part of your steering with the, the way, rear. In the way you do. You do an important part. Oh yeah, yeah. You do an important part of your accelerating with the rear. You know, and even with your weight distribution, it's um, it's just an exciting way to drive. But I can really. I can also see the the uh, attraction of being like I'm going to just break as late as physically possible and make the corner yeah. uh, in yeah. um, very fast GT3 cars where you're going like 140, 50 miles an hour or something and trying to pick out a braking marker so mm -hmm. there's no right or wrong answer it'd just be very interesting to know and um, yeah yeah Right. so, so tyres next right this, this is so I'm sure everyone watching is now like right okay I want to know the mystery of time. By the way, do make sure to like, subscribe um, to this channel if you're enjoying the video. Let us know where the community is for ACC. Are you there? Do you want us to do more? What can we do? What can we help you with? Should we be setting up leagues and stuff like that? Let us know. Let's build this channel and this community for ACC. It's, a, it's an absolutely great platform. And I think at the moment, it's like, just needs a little bit of love. But here we go. This this is tires and this this this. I'm going to be honest, this puts a lot of people off ACC. Like a lot of people mm -hmm. buy it and they don't play it because of this. They don't buy, they don't even buy it because of this. So what can we do, Nathan, to demystify tyres? So the most important thing about tyres is your pressure and temperatures. Yeah. Um, in this update, I don't know what's going to be in the new update coming soon, but in this current update, your, max, your optimal tyre operating pressure is somewhere between 27.3 psi yeah. and 27.8 psi and what that means is when you're driving after you've been driving a few laps you want your tires to warm up and increase the pressure up to that point but you can't set that pressure when you're here in the pits so when, when you're in the pits you the tires are colder and they need to go around yeah. a bit so you, yeah. your pressures here will be they will go up from these values basically yeah yeah and that's the fun of it that's the trial and error um 
something you have to bear in mind is the track temperature which you see in the top right yeah it gives you an indication so we've got 16 degrees ambient temperature but the track temperature is 22 degrees yeah. so you have to bear in mind that you know the tires are going to warm up and they're going to warm up quite a lot which is going to increase the pressure so you know i'd give it maybe four or five laps yeah and you know after you've set your pressure gone out for four or five laps you have to see what pressure your tires are operating at if they're still you know 26.5 26.7 something like that you know you need to go back to the pits up the pressure by about i don't know 0.5 um, but you also have to bear in mind that the more pressure you put in, the, how can I say, the faster okay, your that, pressure is going to build up. So it's like a tape. Okay, I, I see what you're saying. Like you want to start going up by like slower increments maybe. But I, Yeah, yeah. As someone who's done a lot of iRacing, endurance races, like I've done Nebuling 24, Daytona, Spa, like all this stuff. I've always gone out for these 24 hour races and put pressures on max. So what is the downside in ACC and just like running really high pressure? Does it does that slow the car down? Like what does that mean for the tires if Yeah. Max pressures you basically be overinflating the tires. Yeah. Um, which means you're not gonna be able to get the optimal amount of flex and grip out of your tire. Also, the inside of your tire, the middle part of your tire, yeah. will almost balloon. Yeah. Which will, you know, just overall it will ruin your grip. So, so you want to have um, some, like, I don't say deflation, but some flex in the tire, right? So it can grip the road oh, yeah, and not be like a yeah. balloon. So only the bottom yeah. little bit is touching, like a ra train rail or something. I'm stupid. But yeah, I can kind of yeah. visualize. No, it, it, it would be like a rock. It would be like trying to slide a rock across tarmac okay so once you start going over that 27.7 or whatever then you start to lose grip actually because you're not the tires not the optimal shape for example no okay no and it is very interesting in your mfd when yeah. you are on track you have a graphic of your tire which yeah, is seen that. incredibly helpful um, you've got your tire split up into three sections, yeah. outer, inner, and middle. Yeah. And what you'll notice is that when you've just left the pits, after you've set your pressures, the middle part of your tire will be shorter on the graphic. And that's representing your underinflation due to your tires not reaching the optimal pressure yeah. at that point. Yeah. And as you do a few laps, the, the tires will warm up, they'll go from blue to green. But the middle part of that graphic will also increase yeah. so that all three bars, middle, uh, inner and outer, will be the same height. And that yeah. uh, that um, represents optimal okay, inflation of your tire. So that's an easy... So if, if, you're, if you're running around after five laps and your middle segment of your tire in that graphic is still shorter, then you probably mm -hmm. need to up pressures. And if it's longer than the two inside and outside yeah then you probably yeah, it does go longer as well okay that's very helpful i didn't know that yeah. i knew there are three segments so i didn't know they were different lengths actually so that's very helpful yeah yeah that's what they now the other side of of tire pressures is going too low yeah on the tire pressure you don't want to go too low either if it's a really 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 hot day you would lower the tire pressures yeah um but again, you would have to go out on track just to make sure that when the tires do warm up, due to being on such a hot tarmac, you know, I think some of the tarmac in this in this game goes up to about forty five degrees. Wow. So, you know, it's this trial error again. You would have to go back to the pits, <coughs> adjust your pressures, go back on track, so see how they I'm, warm up. I'm guessing if you underinflate, then you're getting quite a lot of friction because it's kind of moving around a bit more. And that will yeah. like overheat the tires. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you've underinflated, and it's um, how can I say, if you've underinflated the tire, you begin a lot of movement. 
in the tire. Yeah. So what you'd find is on the graphic, it would show you that the tire hasn't reached the operating temperate the operating window, yeah. optimal optimal operating window. But you will find that the tire goes very yellow, uh, very okay, easy. Fine. Wow, it's this overheating. Is together. Okay. It's overheating despite not reaching the pressure. Yeah. So there is a balance to strike. Um, even if it is a really hot day. Yeah. You know, your tires might be going yellow and you might think, oh, you know, let me just lower the pressure. Could make it but worse. That would actually have the opposite effect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, there is a balance to reach. Um, sometimes you do, you, sometimes you do have to, you know, sacrifice pressure for temperature. Sometimes you sacrifice temperature for pressure. Yeah. Um, but, okay. yeah, on the whole, you, you know, you want your tires to be in the green. You want them to be between 27.3 to 27.8 once they warm up. That's the most important thing. They have to warm up to reach that operating window. Yeah. Well, that's very helpful to understand the principles. I can I can see now why trial and error is involved. I can see how it's rewarding to be like, well, I know that in my race, track conditions are going to be 30 degrees. Let's go out now and practice. Let's do a few laps mm -hmm. and get up to temps. And let's see if I need to adjust them. And then you can do trial and error. And then when you go into the race, if it works out, if, if you've got it right, then you might be having a little bit more grip than the people around you, but you, you weren't it because of that. So I can see that's very yeah, different to yeah. iRacing where we just go out to practice a track. We don't go out to adjust the setup on a on a per track base, really. not, not at my level anyway. Maybe the, the real top guys do. Yeah. Um, the next thing I'd say about tires, you have a telemetry page um, on the fuel and strategy tab okay oh yeah so you'll see the wear grain blister and flat spot values given there once you've done i don't know let's say you've just done a short race 10 minute race yeah you can come back to this page um click your tire set that you were just using so let's say you've just gone out on tire set one yeah i think once you come back to the pits ready for your next practice session for your next race yeah. you will automatically be on tire set two yeah but just go back have a look at tire set one when you've done that and you will see how your tires have worn you'll see if you've had any graining any blistering any flat spots yeah and for me if i look at the wear and i see that the inside of my tire has worn a lot more than the outside of my tire yeah i might consider reducing my camber yeah see that because then I know that I'm not, I'm not optimizing the use of my tire. I'm just using the inside of my tire a lot more than I could, than I, than I should be really. So you kind of want to even out the wear. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, I mean, at no point you do you want your outside, inside, and, mid and middle to be exactly even. Okay. Because what that means is, you know, if you're in a high speed corner, the whole car is leaning to the side and you're not making use of that initial camber yeah. to to be flat on the floor when your car is leaning yeah so you know when when a car is standing still the tires always look like they're facing in yeah and sometimes sometimes the inside sometimes the outside of your tire Actually, is off the ground yeah. but it's only when the car is really leaning it's across like to loaded. the side in a high speed corner yeah, only then the tire sits flat. Yeah. Making the most use of the tire at that exact moment. That's exactly what you need. Nice. So yeah, don't worry if your outsides don't wear as fast as your insides. It's just that you don't want them to wear too much faster. Yeah. I mean too much slower for the outside. You want them you want the inside to wear more. Yeah. But not as much as the outside. But, you want to but be there using is a your balance outside. to strike again. Yeah. So that'll be very interesting mm. at say Silverstone. Where you've got these yeah, high speed yeah. corners right yeah so th that's very interesting so we see with tires that psi is related to um the heat um that they get and the inflation and the wear on different segments and we can see that also here we can see the wear when you come in on that tire set and you can use that to inform you about any camber changes so i can start to see how 
it's giving you the information in order to make the changes it's not just mm -hmm. you're scrabbling yeah. around randomly which is very yeah cool. definitely temperature is also you go on the tires page yeah temperature is also a good indication into how you're using your tires um i try to keep mine in about a seven degree difference between the inner and outer yeah so let's say the inner of the tire is about i don't know 75 degrees i try to make the outer no more than 68 okay 67 kind of thing so you know you're using it um yeah yeah Right. yeah so i mean yeah it's just you've got information there that you know some people might not know how to use that information to make choices about their setup yeah but hopefully that helps that really helped me when i was getting used to this yeah that's massive um i'm surprised that in the game they don't kind of make it a bit more obvious but it's kind of mm -hmm. you want to know you need to i guess watch videos like this and look up so yeah yeah it's something i had to look up do you know another weird thing i had to look up if you go back to fuel and strategy yep you'll see you have options for front brakes oh yeah I can now see. those are front and rear pads and something that they don't tell you anywhere on this game is that the different pads actually have different characteristics okay so i think pad one is the hardest most frictional brake pad which will provide you the hardest stopping power. However, it won't last that long. Yeah. I think between one and three hours. Okay. So, you know, sprint races is fine. However, if you're going for a bit more of an endurance, maybe six to 12 hours. Yeah. <clears throat> or I, I think I think three to six hours actually is recommended is pad two. Okay. Territory. Anything longer than that, and also wet weather yeah. is usually regarded as pad three territory okay however number four i don't really understand what the point of it is i think it's been regarded as a what do they call it a competitor's medal or something like that okay <laughs> i don't know what the point apparently it is the hardest pad but it will only stop you a few times something like that if anyone watching knows what pad 4 is then let us know <laughs> yeah <laughs> I guess we don't. okay that's very yeah. interesting and i think you can ch they're in the pit strategy right so i guess you can change them but it must take time you can change them yeah yeah if you wanted to but i i mean in a sprint race it's never worth it yeah all right that's interesting i think that's definitely one i can test a bit further and kind of see stopping distances and stuff like that um, yeah and how yeah they but it's been great to see like the progress like okay ride height is so fundamental you need to understand the, mm -hmm. the philosophy of your car and that starts with what you're driving whether it's mr or fr um tires are very 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 important um and we understand like now how it relates um and we can see here how you how this also informs the camera and stuff like that um tc and abs i i've never really changed that much so mm, you can adjust them on the fly yeah. if needed um so i guess this page is i don't know this page is kind of irrelevant for me oh actually something something to bear in mind yeah as i was talking about the tire wear yeah so as we see your tread is three mil yeah. when it comes as new um however they usually regard your tires as finished at when, when they get to reach about 1.5 mil okay so i mean after a 10 minute race for me my tires would usually be somewhere around 2.8 okay um and I think, yeah, it's, 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 it helps with the indication because like the inside for me would be around 2.8, but the outside would be around 2.9. I kind of feel this is like so exciting for endurance races, right? For, for more than just the drivers. So someone goes, goes out, does a stint, comes in, pit stop, goes out again to do like a mm. double stint. And the rest of the team can be looking at this information and thinking, wow, you know, the wear is a bit more than we thought or 
um mm -hmm. yeah, blah 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 and think about is there anything we could change a lot of it you can't change with the setup it's done so no, should we, should we no. change the driving style a little bit um yeah i mean this is all something that can be sorted through testing as well um you know you can go out and do hour long stints if you wanted to and see exactly how your tires are wearing or you know if you haven't really got time for that you can do maybe a 20 minute stint and then roughly estimate a multiplier from what you've seen from the wear of your tires you know yeah. you can kind of gauge how they're going to continue to wear throughout the stint yeah okay that leaves i think mechanical grip and dampers which are sort of dark arts for me um, yeah, I think I, I don't fully understand these. Um, the first things I would go for are the anti-roll bars. Yeah. Um, particularly the rear. Yeah. Because the rear, if you increase the rear anti-roll bar, you're inducing a bit more oversteer, a bit more stiffness in the rear. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, me personally, I like a loose rear. And it usually comes with having a stiff rear end of the car. Okay. Um, so a track like this, I'd probably go for four on the rear. Um, however, on the front, you know, you don't want to be too stiff. You don't want to be too soft, uh, soft on the front. Um, I think a good example is probably turn four at this track, Catalonia turn four. The, what, after, the um, after the short straight? Yeah, yeah, it's quite a hard short braking zone. Um, but you don't want the car to roll too much to the left yeah. as you transition from braking to turning in. Yeah. Because you will induce a bit of a lock up on the inside tile. Nice. Because yeah. it won't be loaded. So, yeah, you do, you want to keep the front of the car flat um, at a corner like that. But so then if, again, if, if, you know, if it pitches too much, you're going to ask so much for that front left, basically. Is that it? Is it um, is the it, is front it? left, I mean, the front left would be kind of okay. It's just unloading that front right as you turn into the corner. If you're unloading it too much, you're more likely to be locking up. Oh, so the process of unloading it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's why you kind of want to keep the car as flat as possible. <laughs> to you know keep the load on the on the right tires um but again you know that's something that a heavy trail breaker would have a problem with yeah whereas someone who likes to get their braking done a little bit earlier yeah may not have so much of a problem with yeah. but i feel like a page like this set up settings like this open up a whole <laughs> spiral you know, it could be an upward spiral, it could be a downhill spiral of tweaking. Yeah. Because, you know, as we said earlier about brake bias, you can, tr not trick, you can kind of induce the rear of the car to step out going into a corner, which means, you know, you wouldn't have to worry so much about the load on your front tires. Yeah. So in that sense, you know, if you if you like a rear with brake bias, you might not have to worry about anti-roll bars. Yeah. Because you can kind of get your steering done in a different way. Yeah, you just drive around it. Yeah, yeah. But this is the this is the thing that there there's never such a thing as a perfect setup. You know, every driver has their own driving style, which will mean that they have their own particular setup. You know, I, I can go online and find a setup from I don't know, Coach Dave or something, and it might not be right for me. So, so you when know, you do it, setup, it might... do, do you kind mm. of like always do like the fundamental stuff for you? So you kind of yeah, yeah. For me, I've I've spent so much time doing setups in this game that I kind of know what I'm looking for. I mean, this page still kind of loses me, um, but in general, if I'm with an FR car, I would go for an aggressive setup. Stiffen the rear anti-roll bar a little bit, yeah. um, change my brake bias, probably up the rear right height a little bit. Because um, I know for me, those are the fundamentals that I like. Just made that but rear a little bit comes, looser. 
yeah yeah so when it comes to mechanical grip um it's a little bit more difficult for me um i think a track like silverstone i probably go even stiffer than anti-roll bars but a track like uh magello no not magello what's the um the other portuguese track um uh the one in f1 misano misano yeah. oh, italy it's misano yeah misano is a very not slow track but it's got very tight corners so a track like that i would re uh, i would lower that into all bars it's a very track dependent obviously so car of car track oh, yeah. and yeah. then driving style mm -hmm. and then yeah. you but well, this is the thing. Um, sorry, what was it? Oh, so if you don't know those three, then you kind of you're not in a good place where you to even think about a setup. Yeah, yeah. So what you will see is that every car, you know, if you've picked your favourite car, you can go to every track and pick an aggressive setup, and you'll notice that they will be different. So the wheel race will be different. Anti roll bars will be different. Um, and just by doing that, you will kind of learn. Yeah. What they have set up for you. Yeah. Um, and you will learn, you know, just from seeing that what an optimal kind of setup looks like. Yeah. Um. Because yeah, I mean, even PSIs would be different per track, depending on how often you're loading the tires. A track like Silverstone, you're gonna have a lot of load on the tires, but. You know, it's not going to be that often because, you know, you've got a lot of straights where the tires can cool down a little bit. But a track like Solder, you've got constant corners coming up at you. Yeah. So the PSIs will be different in the standard setups that they give you. And it's just something you learn. Um, yeah. And, you know, you, you, you pick things up from other tracks that you might like. So you go to a track like Spa and you'll notice something on the setups that you think, oh, okay, I know why this is different. Um, maybe I could take this somewhere else. I think for me, it was the ride heights and the wing levels. So a track like Zandvoort, Zolda, Misano, the rear was always a lot higher than the front compared to a track like Silverstone or Spa. Yeah. where the rear was a little bit lower um but you know i would see how well the car would handle how agile it would be in the slow corners at tracks like mizano zolder and zanvo and i would think to myself oh you know the car is really agile because of this yeah maybe i'll take this into a track like silverstone or spa and see how it is yeah like can you handle it from there yeah yeah and from there it's just been great to learn really nice well that's been very helpful like going through the fundamentals and obviously i think like you said it can definitely turn into a bit of a spiral but and mm. i'm sure you can get to a point where you're just every change you make is affecting something else so you, you hit a point of like less like mar less marginal returns but i'm sure at yeah. the beginning like yeah. the fundamentals of how you're setting up the car be a very satisfying thing to do just to know that you're sort of dialing it in so i don't think there's gonna be like magic magic bullets unless there's exploits but the kind of dialing it in and, and honing your driving style i can see is something that's really satisfying so yeah the first thing i would say is just go standard safe um or standard aggressive either which way it doesn't matter just get to know your car um there is no point doing setups until you understand your car understand your driving style um aggressive setup will always be a little bit more lively yeah than a safe setup but it is a faster way to drive okay so yeah getting to know the difference between safe and aggressive first of all is is really important um because you know you get to learn your driving style you get to know your car and then from there you can start tweaking the setups um 
but yeah it's it's there is a lot to it really the deeper you want to go you know th there's there's no end yeah. to how deep you want to go with it um but on the whole aggressive is aggressive in, in front engine cars is usually a very good setup to start with you would have to always adjust your tires to your track and temperature yeah. but from there you know it's they're really not bad well there we go yes yeah, so be careful if you go down this hole but um i hope this video has really really helped let us know if you've got any comments in the comments um make sure to join the discord as well if you want to kind of be part of an acc community there maybe we can organize races um obviously this is this video is about the thing that i think that puts most people off acc and yes there are a lot of screens here but i think what has been so helpful in this one is to learn the different groupings of philosophies and how things relate to each other and that kind of breaks it down into more manageable bits and you know it's kind of kind of bites us when you compare this to gt7 it makes gt7 looks like a bit like child's play which is interesting because gt7 <laughs> put a lot of people yeah. but yeah that's been very helpful nathan i think what we've got to do next is we've got to hit the track and yeah. um get this bmw out of catalina so we'll do that next i'll put a link to that video in the top right or left or something really hope you enjoyed it make sure to like subscribe all of that good stuff and we'll see you in the next one